President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris made a voting rights push in Atlanta Tuesday, challenging senators to stand against voter suppression. Take a look. I've been around the Senate a long time. I was vice president for eight years. I've never seen a circumstance where not one single Republican has a voice that's ready to speak for justice now. Years from now, our children and our grandchildren, they will ask us about this moment. They will look back on this time, and they will ask us not about how we felt. They will ask us, what did we do? We cannot tell them that we let a Senate rule stand in the way of our most fundamental freedom. President Biden also addressing the highly controversial filibuster. Take a listen. I believe that the threat to our democracy is so grave that we must find a way to pass these voting rights bills. Debate them. Vote. Let the majority prevail. And if that bare minimum is blocked, we have no option but to change the Senate rules, including getting rid of the filibuster for this. While the push was well received by many, some voting rights activists are not happy about it. Some groups boycotted the president and vice president's visit and demanded action. The co-founder of Black Votes Matter, Cliff Albright, spoke to our Charles Blow Tuesday evening about the visit. Take a listen to what he had to say. Did he go quite as far as that we would have liked? Did he have a, a, a full plan? Did he did he give us any idea of like what his next steps might be? That that he might be calling in Mansion and Cinema to the White House, or or heck, that they might even go away to, to Camp David where they can work out, uh, you know, what the kinks could be on filibuster reform? Or did he announce that he's going to be going to the Senate to the Democrat, Democratic Caucus and, and giving another speech where he talks directly to those senators to try to get them motivated to go out there? There are several next steps that he could have laid out. We didn't really get a sense of that. We got a sense for what he's calling for. We right. didn't really get a sense of what his engagement is going to be. But we'll see over the next the next 24 to 48 hours what those actions will be that will follow up on the speech. And again, that was Cliff Albright, mm. co-founder of Black Voters Matter. And I agree with him. We need action. We've seen the photo ops, and hey, I think Biden gave a really yep. nice speech. It was a nice speech, a little more defin definitive, mm -hmm. and I think we need to see that. But uh, we need action. We need action in the form of the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. Uh, this is just one of several speeches we've heard from Biden on the importance of voting rights and legislation. And yet we've, we've not seen the, the needle move. I mean, I always say when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema, mm -hmm. they have said that they're not going to support changing the filibuster needed to end the debate. And, and I believe them. I think where he needed to be was not in Atlanta giving this speech. We needed to see him in West Virginia and Arizona putting the pressure on Manchin and Cinema, And even Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona, who's also expressed doubts over ending mm -hmm. the Senate filibuster rule, Mike. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, we've heard the speeches before. Um, like the rights groups are saying, the civil rights groups saying, uh, look, uh, less of this talk, this fiery talk, more action. We've been here before with the speech. We've heard them speak out and talk about the need for voting rights protections when we came to in, in Tulsa. We heard them talking about it last week when we was commemorating what happened on January 6th of 2021. So we heard him speak harshly uh, to a lot of the uh, usually it's the Republicans or the people who are trying to stop the democracy from happening here when it comes to voting rights uh, in this country. But, yeah, we need a little bit more when it comes to his own party. It is time to stop playing nice. First and foremost, with the Republicans who don't respect, who don't want to do anything for you, how many times can you reach your hand out and get your hand slapped away before you stop reaching your hand out? Sometimes you just got to say, you know what, we have the majority. We have to do what we need to do now. In order to have the majority and get things done, I need to get my own house in order. But Naja, here's the question. How does he do that? You can scream, you can yell, you can go to West Virginia all you want to, you can go to Arizona. If you got politicians, and I don't know the reason and why, I don't think anybody can get in the Kirsten Sinema's head, head, and I think Joe Manchin, when it comes to where he lives, 
knowing that as a Democrat, basically he is, um, you know, he's an aberration more so than a norm when it comes to the politics of, of that state. He knows he can get away with it. He knows he can play both sides of the fence and get away with it. Kirsten Cinema, there might be some other things that are going on there. So how does he convince them that this is something they need to get on board when it comes to the filibuster in order to get voting rights passed? This yes. ain't scandal, Naja. This ain't scandal. Kerry Washington's not coming out with a little white suit on, right. <laughs> drinking red wine mm -hmm. and eating popcorn on her sofa. The, Olivia Pope's not coming out with some <laughs> pictures somewhere of Kirsten Cinema or mm -hmm. John, John Joe Manchin. Mm -hmm. If they do, I think they would have played this hand a long time ago. So yeah. the question is, how do you convince these two, along with others, as you just mentioned, that the filibuster needs to be modified in order to get this done? How is the question? Yeah, um, you're exactly right. I mean, Biden said in his speech the filibuster was used 154 times. It's been used to weaponize and hinder voting rights. So I think to answer your question, we've got to change the Senate rules. We're going to hear a lot, I think, moving forward today about imploring what's called the nuclear option. There's been a lot of talk of using this. And that basically means changing the Senate rules um, to pass legislation with a simple majority. Senators need 60 votes to do just about anything in the Senate but change the rules. That only takes 51 votes. Uh, but the big concern, Mike, here is for Democrats is we know they won't always have control of the Senate. And when Republicans are in charge, you can bet that they will return the favor. Uh, well, well, if they're in charge, if you don't get voting rights done, if you don't get people out to the polls, if you don't get people out to keep the Democrats in Congress, or at least try to, to do their best to keep the Democrats in, in Congress, or even if you don't, ener you don't energize your base uh, to do your part to try and keep uh, uh, control of Congress or the Senate, the Republicans are going to take over anyway. And this Republican Party, you best believe they're not playing nice. You best believe if they have the majority, you think... <laughs> If you can't get 10 Democrats to, to side with them, you think they're not going to change the filibuster? Honestly, you think they're not going to do the same thing that you're saying that we can't do? John, uh, Man Manchin and Cinema, you think they're going to play nice? You think this, in order to get their legislation done, whenever they, they have a president, if they take control of the White House in 2024 and they have control of the Senate and Congress uh, or, or the House of Representatives, you really think they're not going to do this to you? Honestly, yeah. are we going to be naive here? Are we going to sit up here and be naive with this Republican Party? This is not the same Republican Party that Joe Biden uh, worked with when he was in Senate before he became vice president. Even when he was the vice president, it is not the same party. It has changed tremendously. So you can throw out the words and say, I work with guys like Strom Thurmond. Mm -hmm. Of course, Strom Thurmond, who was a segregationist and, and all that type of stuff. These, these people... Might be a, well, not worse than uh, Strom Thurmond. They, they, mm -hmm. You might have many Strom Thurmonds right mm -hmm. now uh, in the Senate that you got to deal with. So stop even thinking about thinking that the Republicans are going to play nice with you. You got to start taking care of Mansion and Cinema. Once again, it comes down to how do you get them to flip their script when it comes to what they're thinking to get legislation done, and not just with the Voting Rights Act. Build back better. They're not on board with that either. Yeah, that's the thing about that. Joe Manchin. What about the other stuff that's supposed to be going on for black people when it comes to uh, the Justice and Policing Act, the George Floyd bill? That hasn't gotten done yet either. So how are you going to energize your base? But it's not too late to get the voting rights. And we're going to talk to Amisha Cross about this. And I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm, I'm actually filibustering right now. I'm taking up all the time. But I'm <laughs> fired up about with this. The truth. And I apologize for that. Yeah, no, it's the but, truth. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want to talk to me because it, it, when it comes to voting rights, there, there are certain parts of legislation that are time sensitive that you got to get done. You want to mm -hmm. get because you have, need to get infrastructure. You got these bridges that are collapsing out there. Obviously, the relief package because COVID, you need to get people out there and get, get money in people's pockets because we're, we're going through financially. If you can get the voting rights thing done, as long as you get it done before we actually go to the polls again in November, right, make it happen. That's it. it so stop saying we want to get it done by MLK. Let's just get it done. Yeah. If we get it done in March, we get it done. But get it done before November so the people can be energized to go out to the polls and use those rights that you've given them to so that they can have the right to vote. That is the bottom line. And uh, I'm going to ask Amisha Cross about that when she joins us, uh, I think, coming up in the next hour or so. All right. The truth. We'll end it at that. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, 
I, I just talked the bill to death. I just talked the whole thing to death. That's what I do, filibuster. Well, hey, that was a good example of what a filibuster is, but you were speaking the truth. But yes, that's exactly what they do, you know? The, but see, that's how they, the, that, that's what the filibuster used yes. to be. You modify it. If they want to modify it, let them do that, okay? Yeah. Let's modify it that way. Not just say, okay, well, you need 60 votes. No, forget that. Mm -hmm. you know, uh -uh. Let's talk. Tell me reason why.